hi guys welcome to pixel affair so in today's video we are going to see how we will do this using cinema 4d and cinema 4d's dynamic um, system right so this is actually a, vid uh, a video i originally saw on youtube and i think it was done using houdini I i'll actually leave the link of the video if i find it in the description so you can check that one out later but i decided to try it out and see if i can use my 4 pyro and the cloth system to do something similar and this is what i was able to come up with right so we are going to see how we do this in cinema 4d right so this you can see it's just a normal head and um, disintegrating into particles and with some smokes and stuff and i also have another one with like a um, no gold effect but straight um head dissolving disintegrating so let's actually get into cinema 4d and see how we will do this so i have a new scene open in cinema 4d and i'm using cinema 4d 2023.2 right and i have this head bust which um i have already brought in but it, it can be found if you go to your asset browser and you search for head you can see you have this generic head bust that's what i actually use in this case and i've actually placed it under the subdivision surface to give it um, this particular subdivision surface to give it a bit more segment in this one then but then it was in the original one the segment was a bit small but in this case because it's a tutorial i just uh, increased this uh, subdivision to like just one to get a bit more segment and also smooth surface so now that we have this head in here what i want to do is i want to use vertex mode to control the growth or how the disintegration um, happens so i right click on the head come to my other tags and I'll add vertex map to it and you can see 10 thread let's select the vertex map and you can see already we have um, in here you can make sure use field is checked and now already have this freeze layer which has been applied in there we like it so we leave it there but we'll go ahead and create a box field so I'll come into my fields and I'll choose a box field and that's what's going to control how our um, um, vertex map growth starts so I'll make the box field a bit smaller like that and I want it to start growing from the back here so I'll move it at the back right something like this and let's even make it thinner like that so at frame zero we don't want it to affect our vertex map so at frame zero i'll set the keyframe for the box field here and at frame 10 i'll move it in like that right so that it affects it and now if we hit play this is what happens but it doesn't grow so for for it to grow i'll come into the vertex map i'll select the freeze layer and i'll change the mode from none to grow right and the radius is quite important depending on how small your segments are and then like how close they are so in this case the 10 centimeters will be fine but if you have very small polygons it means you have to probably reduce your radius so that it will be a bit faster so let's hit play you can see it grows on but it's very quick so let's reduce the effect strength to like say 30 and now if i hit play again and see it's growing on i think this is fine but let's reduce the effect strength maybe back to let's say 20 which is should be fine in this case because it's the tutorial now that we have it what i usually do is that i want to be able to scroll through my timeline to see how my vertex map um, works and everything right and the vertex map is sort of calculated so usually after i'm cool with my vertex map animation i want to bake it as a lembek so i right click on the head and i'll see bake as a lembek i'll just choose ok and now I have the head big as Alembic in here. So I can go ahead and disable this one. Right. Um, check and hide it. So now this is the Alembic head that we Alembic head we have. And you can see if I select it, you have the vertex map applied to it. And now when I scroll through it too, it works. Everything is fine. So now to get it to disintegrate and have all of that start moving, we will need a cloth tag on our um, head so i right click on the head come to simulation and i'll add a cloth tag to the head right now if i hit play because of gravity it will fall so i hit ctrl d and go to the project settings and in the simulation tab we come to down here to the scene and then make sure gravity is set to zero right so now if i hit play it shouldn't fall because there's no gravity in the scene right there's a bit of movement but i mean it's fine you are going to um control it with the vertex map right so now that the cloth simulation everything is working let's actually go ahead and add extra more forces so i come into my simulation um tab up here and i come to forces and i add the wind force here 
right let's select the reinforce and go to the object um, tab let's increase the strength like say 40 and maybe increase the turbulence a bit also if maybe 15 and also let's go ahead again create another force which is turbulence force here add it and also let's also increase that one the strength to like 15 and also the scale to like 15 as well or 15 and now if we hit play let's see what we have you can see it's affecting our head and all of that also let's also select the um, cloth tag here once again and increase the stretchiness to like 100 or even more thousand by and the bendiness to also thousand right so that it's quite stretchy and bendy and moves like that now to get every polygon to disintegrate by each um itself we use the tearing in the cinema 4d system so i'll come down here to the cloth tag down here you can see we have tearing let's check cloth tearing and the tearing pass let's set it to this hundred points one and let's increase the tearing guide to like 90. so now if i hit play you can see our polygons are disintegrating into each and every individual like you know separately and that's exactly what i used in the original so now that i have this thing working i don't want it to all have start tearing like that that's why we are going to use the vertex map to control how it, it works so i'll select the cloth tag and i'll come to the mix animation tab and i'll make sure with pins is checked and in the with, with pins i'll actually drag and drop in the vertex map and now the vertex map is going to control where you know that this integration sort of affected so if i hit play you can see it starts affecting it from the back here all right and that's exactly um what we want right you can see it's affecting it as a matter of i think the turbulence is too much so i reduce the turbulence to like five all right something like that so that the wind will affect it and now it's pushing it backwards so now that we have our basic animation for the disintegration let's assume this is fine right all we have to do is to now bake it as a lembek as well so i say i think i'll take this one as cool i like it so i'll just in let's increase our number of frames actually to like let's say 150 and now i'll simply right click on the this one i'm assuming i like the animation right click on it and say bake as a lembek all right go ahead and see save it and it will bake now after it's bake i'll actually come back and we continue so now the hair um the head is integration has also been baked into a lembek so let's disable the first one with the cloth tag and now if i scroll through it you can see it plays smoothly and this is exactly what we want so let me first of all disable the wind and the turbulence if um forces and now if i hit play you can see this is what we have right that's basically the same idea i used in the original video just that it had more details so now that we have this animation set we are good for they are done with the disintegration part the next part is basically the pyro part right and to do that with the pyro i will select the first head bus that we created with the vertex map i'll actually select it which is this one i'll come to edit copy and i'll create a new scene and i'll edit paste so that you have only that particular head bust right i'll delete the cloth tag that was added to it and now it's just the alembic head with the vertex map on it so if i scroll through, you can see we have it here and this is what we are going to use to generate our um pyro so what i'll do is i'll right click on the head bust simulation and i'll come in here and i'll create pyro emitter right and now if we hit play we should be able to generate our pyro and you can see it's generating smoke and fire which is fine for us now we don't want it to continue uh, continue generating all the way so first of all i'll select the pyro of um, tag itself come in here we don't want um temperature right which is the fire all we want is the um density right also i don't want so much noise so i'll disable the noise in here as well and what i i think i did come to the pyro um tap uh, pyro object itself and go to the pyro scene click to open the pyro scene in here and i also did settings uh, some settings in here so i'll go to the pyro tab here and i think i reduced um 
the vorticity to something like I think one yeah and also the table lines also reduced it to like two you know this is just to show all the things I again also I reduced the voxel side to very something more like one or even less but then in this case and because like I said it's tutorial I'm not going to actually go ahead and do that because it will be very slow for my uh, machine to render and record at the same time so this is basically um, the vertex and the scene I set up right and now I want it to be affected by the table lens and the um, wind deformer as well so I simply go back into the old scene select the two different forces copy come in here and I'll paste the forces in here right and I'll enable them and let's see what we have the table lens and the wind deformer how it affects our smoke and you can see it's pushing it back and it's affecting it right because like I said the pyro um, voxel side is quite small it's very huge so we don't see the effect so what I'm going to do with this after like let's say I assume this is fine let's reduce it to three and see if it will be faster enough for us to record All right yeah something like this so you can see the wind and the turbulence is affecting our right, but it, it's it continue like generating continuously and we don't want that we want it to start like the way the vertex map goes from the back and to the front so i'll come into the um pyro tab here and in the density if you click on it, you can see we have density map and you can use vertex map to control that so if i select the vertex map you can see with the vertex map it starts from um let me disable the pyro for now you can see the vertex map where is it i think the pyro is still playing so i can select it and uh, basic i think enable let's uncheck and now yeah so i'll select the vertex map and you can see with the vertex map it starts from here and grows all the way front to the front let's increase the time but the issue with this is that when it like what we are going to how we are going to use it to affect the pyro is that wherever it turns yellow now it means it should generate um smoke or uh, the density right but because it doesn't go back to red again it will continuously generating the smoke or the density so we we want to let it set off generate the density and then it stop generating right that's what we want to use and to do that we will select the vertex um the head right click on it add another vertex map to it let's name the vertex map because the first one was not named so let's name this one to vertex map two and now fields is checked and everything so let's go into the fields tab and drag in the first vertex map in here right and now if i select this you know the second one which is the vertex map to and drag you can see the first vertex map has been added in here so but we don't want it to affect it entirely we want just the tip or the you know the beginning part of the vertex map so we can come into our modify layers and i'll add a, a curve and in the curve i hold control and click in the middle here to create a point and i'll take the last point and drag it down and the first point and move it up like that so what it's basically doing is that you can see it starts generating it um, some yellow and it disappears so that's what we are going to use to generate our smoke all right you can see it comes on and so over it turns yellow then it generates a smoke and it disappears so that's what we want so now i'll go into my pyro um, enable the pyro back i'll select the tag and i'll enable it and it should be working um yeah the pyro is working so i can simply go into the density map right and drag and drop in the second vertex map we created in here all right and I, it's quite slow but now if i hit play you can see and it starts generating from the back right and now that's exactly what you want start generating from the back not from the whole um head at once so that's basically how i also use to set up the pyro in this particular scenario now one thing i did in the original one so basically i think you get the idea now this vertex map was what you used and now the table lens and everything was also added to get the same feel i played around with it a bit to get it how i want it now let me actually go into the original scene where the whole thing 
um, work so that I can actually break it down a little bit more, the things I added. So this is the original scene. You can see this is the head bust breaking, right? And it's si the same thing. If I select the vertex map, you can see this is the, the vertex map that was used to control the pyro. And this is the vertex map, which is affecting the whole um, object, like the whole head to disintegrate, right? Another, now let's bring in the pyro itself. So what I did is the with the pyro is I I baked it. So if I actually go in here and I enable my volume loader, you can see we have the volume. Let me also this hide it. And this is what I did. All right. So you can see with the this pyro, I actually when you select the pyro object, usually the emitter is set. Uh, this one is set to surface emit uh, surface emitter. I make sure it's unchecked. So the pyro that was generating was generating from the volume of our object, right? So that it's not on the surface of our um, object. So if I go back into this scene where we have the pyro in here, if I select, you can see it said to the surface emitter is on. So I uncheck this one so that the volume that um, the pyro that is generated will be generated inside the head. But that one too is quite slow. But so you have to cache it after you are done. Let's go back to the original scene. So now that one was checked and then you can see I use the vertex map to density to control the density so that the volume um, this thing that's generated the pyro that's generated is um, following the vertex map to generate our pyro. Another thing I did, I think that's basically it. I didn't do too much of it. Like I said, like if I select the pyro and check the pyro cache okay so after that i cached it and everything but i think the the pyro detail like was set to um voxel size was set to i think one in this case and now the reason why i'm using the volume loader to show you this is that after i actually brought it in the volume builder so that i can have some sort of control so in the volume builder um uh, volume loader what i did was that i it wasn't fitting directly with the head of objects right with the head this integration that i was doing so i had to sort of scale it a little bit so in this case you can see if i select this and scale it you can see with the volume loader now i can scale the pyro simulation a bit like that so i had to adjust it a bit you know and in, you can see you can actually now have sort of control the pyro um simulation so that's why i use the volume loader to actually after i cached it now i use the volume loader and how to cache it is as simple as just selecting your pyro um let me enable it um selecting your pyro and come to the cache tab uh, first of all in the scene the which of them you want to cache and in our case all i wanted was the density so i set everything off and i make sure um, density was on and then i go ahead and hit cache and save it to where i want to save it and after it was done I just um, use the volume loader to bring it in so that I can sort of control the transform. So with the volume loader, it sort of turns it into um, a regular object which you can actually transform it and however you want it and all of that. So I use the volume loader to sort of um, scale it a bit for it to fit with the um, disintegrating hair, um, head object, right? And that's how I got it. Now, another thing I also did is that I wanted a bit more detail. So with the good objects, let me go ahead and disable the volume loader so that you see. So with the gold object, I actually use matrix. So what I did is I created a matrix object, right? Come to the object scene, object tab, and I cloned it. I use the head disintegrating hair as the source. So clone plenty matrix on the disintegrating hair. And then I use the vertex map, right? This vertex map to control the scale of this um, matrices, right? So you can see if I select the plane, you can see for all of, from here or the matrix is, is not showing. That's because if I select the plane effector and come to the fields, you can see I've added the vertex map, right? And now inverted it so that all these parts, because it's not yellow, it's not showing. And whilst the vertex map grows, then it reveals these um, matrices. Then you know it adds a bit more details to it. And I actually made that one yellow. But in other another scene, I also made it like um, the white, like in this case. So you can see the first one. 
whilst it is in the it is integrating then the gold particles will also be coming on but in this one as well it was just straight for like you know all white and everything so that's basically the whole scene i i played i was just playing around with it and i thought i should do a quick breakdown of how this whole thing was set up and i hope this video was actually useful if there's more questions or anything that you still don't understand you can actually ask in the comment section or you can hit me on instagram at pixel affair and ask me whatever you don't understand and i'll try as much as possible to see if i can answer those ones for you after that i actually rendered this with redshift um it's straightforward right so thank you for watching if you want probably you want to know how i actually rendered the redshift i'll actually show that one in the next video if i get a comment on how i did that so thank you for watching once again and i hope this video was useful you learned a tip or two and i'll see you in the next one